Okay, <clears throat> so this is uh, the sixth video, and this is uh, the quick tutorial on how to uh, texture the cracker box model. Um, again, tutorials, and uh, this is the material. In this case, we just need the the file, the texture file, and then it's this thing is in uh, polygon texturing, and then it's the lesson one texture mapping, and it is this thing here we're going to do. Um, again, I'm not going to follow the steps here step by step, but uh, essentially what we need to do is create a cube uh, of 8 by 10 by 3, and that's all we, we need. Okay, so I'm going to again create a polygon primitive, I'll turn on interactive cube, and then I go to the polycube over here, or I can do it in channel box, cube, and go uh, uh, 3, 8, 10. There you go. Uh, 10 should be hard. And there you go. So this is the model. Um, and then I'll uh, just open the UV texture editor here. So you can see this is what a default uh, <coughs> cube looks like. So when uh, when models are made, there's different settings for different uh, layouts. So for instance, no texture whatsoever, no normalization off. So that will just be a big one. one image for each, each face separately, all on top of each other, collectively, or preserve aspect ratio. It doesn't really matter in this case because I'm going to do something entirely different. Um, but I'll start out by adding a blend material to this. And in this blend I'll add a texture and I'll go file texture and I'm going to navigate. In this case it will be the D drive on my machine getting started. It's there we go, and then this will be in UV mapping, and it's in source images, uh, UV lesson. Oh, it has to be a PSD, but it'll work anyway. Uh, I just don't get the option of choosing different uh, layers and stuff, so that's okay. Turn on textures in here. I'm running in uh, normal mode. I could also pump it up oops, to um, uh, U-Port 2.0. It's, it's up to you. Okay. So it looks like this, and if we look in our UV texture editor, we have this. So obviously this is not exactly what we want. But for this, we'll again use, grab the model, go create UVs, and go automatic mapping. And um, just kick through this, and you can see we get all these separate pieces. Um, it depends on what you want. I could also turn this down to three. And I'll get something that is very much similar. It's, uh, it doesn't really matter. Six is fine. Okay. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to find uh, this area over here and this area over here. So okay, so this thing here, grab the UV here for that one, and then hold Control right click to shell. Control right click to shell. So that selects this part here, and then I can use this rotation button here. There, it rotated, and then I use my move tool, and I move that into position, and you can see over here it starts to look right. Um, what I'll do is just scale this, ooh, scale, oops, that's the wrong way, and do scale that one down just slightly, and then move it down a little bit, like so. That looks nice. Good. <clears throat> then for this section oops, over here, you can see that's actually like a, a flattened out area. So this part was cut open and then it was just flat, flattened out. So what I'll do here is I'll use the move and sew thing. So I'll just right click and go edge, grab this, and use the move and sew button. And you can see that popped it over there. Grab this thing, go move and sew. And this one here, move and sew. Just and this one and so, so you can see now I have this uh, layout here and I just grab UV, grab that, control right click to shell and then I need to rotate this into position like so and then I need to move it over and you can see it's too big for this area so I need to start scaling it so I'll just scale this down a little bit so that actually looks nice but what I can also do is I can just grab these uh, piece by piece and then I just nudge these into place I like, but it's actually 
pretty okay here, so it's done. It's not exactly the same way as it's done in the tutorial, um, but as I said, um, this is just a quick way of, of doing this sort of thing. Um, I'll just show a, a quick example of something else. So if I grab something like a polygon torus, there we go, just move it over here so we can have a look. And I'll just assign the, the same material here, or maybe just an image. Oh, sorry, uh, there we go. And so we can see this is the UV map. Uh, what you should um, notice is that torus is basically just a a double uh, warped surface uh, so uh, first it's warped together to create a cylinder and then it's warped again to create like this uh, tube that turns on itself um, but if I uh, if I didn't have this if I had something else like for instance if I used uh, automatic mapping I'd get something like this everything was cut up in pieces and, and I needed to figure out how to to make this work or maybe uh, even more interesting I may have a uh, I may have a, a planner mapping from a certain direction, so you can see this comes in from a strange area. Uh, I want this to be, I'll just try this again, just go planner mapping. In this case I go to option box and say it should be from the y-axis, so down from the top. There we go. So now I have this thing going through, and if I just add a material to this, uh, just a material attributes, and then I add a texture. And this time the texture will be from my desktop, and I have one down here, the same as we used before. Blop, 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 blop. Where did I put it? Uh, it's, it's there, okay. okay. So you can see this is what it looks like. Um, and uh, what I'll do is I'll cut it up, so I'll just go edge, grab this, and then I'll use the cut button. So now it's separate, so I just go UV, grab one UV there and control right click to shell and then I'll move that apart oh yeah I need to cut it up in the inside as well so I just grab that and cut it and then go UV grab that control right click to shell and then move that apart okay so I have both here so one thing you'll notice that one is blue and one is red so the red one is actually uh, inverted because it was projected from the top and down to the bottom so I want to grab this and then I want to flip it so now it's the right way around. Another thing you'll see is that, um, hopefully you'll see, is that the texture warps quite a bit here at the edge because it was projected linearly. So what I'll do is I'll relax that. So I'll grab UV, I'll grab this. So for this thing, which is the bottom, i use this thing called relax. So I'll grab relax options, set this to world space. And when I relax this, it'll look at the, um, the spacing and then use that so there you go and you can see it spaces it much more nicely and the result is that my UVs looks nice um, this will pin the border and everything so that'll work the other option I have is to grab this thing over here and then use the unfold option so I'll go to tool unfold and then I'll unfold this and you can see I get something very similar uh, not quite the same but very similar so I can unfold this as well okay. So this creates very nice, uh, evenly spaced <coughs> textures, even in the area where it doesn't look uh, the same. Okay, in another video I talked about the difference in, in, in detail. So if I grab UVs for this part here, which is the bottom part, and I'll then uh, scale this down. And I'll move it over to where we have some detail in it, which, like so. So you can see Although this is uh, is it, it's it's quite usable and at this distance it probably looks okay. The problem is that this is visually much coarser than this up here. So it's very important for the the illusion to be believable is that the area um, in question is uh, has a relatively uh, equal um, quality. So I'll just go to layout here. And then I'll set it to world, non-overlapping, and it should prescale. So there we go. So you can see now what it does. It it figures out the the, the world size of this. Oops, that was my crack box. Uh, and it uh, if I just grab one of these, uh, so for instance, uh, there we go. Just grab this. Grab 
to shell and then just rotate it until I get something of visual complexity. There we go. So what you can see here, what you can see here is that although as we come very close, this of course doesn't look uh, perfect, but the visual complexity of this is the same. So it's it doesn't irritate the eye uh, to the same level. Uh, the line here, of course, does, but but the the quality is uh, if everything is at the same level, it's okay. Uh, whereas if something is really good and something is not so good, that will sort of break the illusion of, of everything of where it works and how it works. So um, yeah, that was the. Uh, just a quick uh, version of the cracker box.